And we're back. We've got here vitamin D3. Now, this is cool to see because here's that isoprene we were talking about, those five carbons. Whenever you got these strings hanging off here, you're going to start seeing these repeating patterns. We've got rings that have opened up here. When you look at a steroid, you're going to see three six-membered rings and a five-membered ring. Well, here what happened is you got your double bonds, rings opened up, you got an OH down here. This is going to mimic testosterone, your estradiols, all your pro, all your, what do you call them, your sex hormones, I guess I'll call them here. But vitamin D3, they've just doubled the daily recommended allowance, the RDA of this, recommended daily allowance, doubled it. You need the sun to activate these. There's a fat soluble, right? Remember we were looking before? We've got vitamin D is a group of fat soluble pro hormones, which means they're not the hormone. They need to be activated. That's what the sunlight does to them. There are forms of D2, D3. These are all ex obtained from sun exposure, the food and supplements but they must undergo two hydroxylation reactions to become activated. Calcitrol is the active form of vitamin D found in the body. So we don't have enough time to go through all this about it, but look at the molecule here. When you remember how the steroid ring was, this is a steroid ring. It's opened up. So the sun is what's going to activate this. You've got to get your vitamin D, it's a family again. Pro-hormones, pre, before they're being used. You're going to absorb this from your diet. You're going to go out into the sun. You're going to activate it. Old folks, 15 minutes a day, you don't get enough sun. And now vitamin BS. We're going to call it vitamin 1, B1, BS1. Why? There's a sulfur in there. If we just put it into the name, it's going to be a lot easier to remember. But look, again, look at these rings. Isn't this cool? You got a five-membered ring with a sulfur. You can just do the color coding. You don't even need to look. S, yellow, blue, nitrogen. Double bonded. It's close to aromatic. OH on the end. Methyl here. Carbon holding this to a six-membered ring with two nitrogens in it. Aromatic, you got a methyl hanging off here, you got an amide hanging off here. Nitrogen, carbon. Nitrogens, carbon's in the ring. Carbon holding it together. Sulfur in a ring with a nitrogen. You don't see that very often. This is a cool molecule here. So instead of just calling it vitamin B1, I thought, why not call it BS1? So if you wonder which one has the sulfur in it, BS1. And the names on these things, you know, you've got purine. The purine has the two nitrogens in the bigger ring. Pyrimidine is a five-member ring, and so on and so forth. This goes on. Technical names. Draw it in a way that you like it. I think these guys are cool. You can give them little eyeballs. One eye is bigger than the other. What do you think is bigger, a sulfur atom or a nitrogen atom? When you look at it, it's real simple to see, isn't it? It doesn't look like he's got a little foot. He's got a methyl foot. He's got a knee kicking back with an alcohol here. Looks like a little home base running home, doesn't he? So again, little kids can come up with their own little drawings for these. But again, this is a vitamin... BS1 is also known as thiamine. So what's our nickname here? We call him the thiamine pentahexaring, vitamin BS1. What a name, huh? Vitamin BS. It's got the sulfur in it. What more could you ask for? And L-DOPA. If you remember L-DOPA from last time, L is the, the chiral configuration that it gets here. It's synthesized from the essential amino acid L-phenylalanine. 
and L-tyrosine. So in the mammalian body and brain, L-dopa is used. It's a precursor to neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. That's adrenaline. So aside from the natural and essential biological role, it was also used to treat Parkinson's disease and any kind of dopamine responsive dystonia. But again, to make this thing look more approachable, whenever I heard El Dopa, being in California, I'm hearing El Dopa. So we give him a little sombrero. He's got a little OHs for his um, antenna, I guess you'd say. Benzene face again, right? It gives him personality. He's got a carbon chain going here with a nitrogen. He says, El Dopa, stupido? No, see, I like silicon. Chemistry is a mystery to me. So down here, too, you got the carboxylate. See, double bonded O? Water loving. This sink has a tail that will dissolve in water. Electromagnetic, negative charge. You got a nitrogen up here hanging off the end. You got a benzene ring with two alcohols for his top of his antennae up there. So this is L dopa. And this is really what it looks like. I mean, I don't even need to make this up. What else do we have for your enjoyment here? Now, this is what I'm proud of because when these things come together, 